increases in afferent arterial resistance lead to decreases in glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. Let's use this animation to show what happens to glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, which is represented by the green line, as afferent arterial resistance increases, which is represented by the narrowing of the afferent arterial. From this, we see that increases in afferent arterial resistance result in decreased glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. This occurs because the afferent arterial is upstream of the glomerular capillaries. Conversely, increases in efferent arterial resistance lead to increased glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. Now, let's pay close attention to the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure as efferent resistance increases, which is represented by the narrowing of the efferent arterial. The increase in hydrostatic pressure associated with the increased efferent arterial resistance is due to decreased outward flow via the efferent arterial. This occurs because the efferent arterial is downstream of the glomerular capillaries, which creates a back pressure within the glomerular capillaries themselves. The net ultrafiltration pressure determines glomerular filtration rate, and that net ultrafiltration pressure equals the difference between net hydrostatic pressure and net oncotic pressure. Now let's use this animation to show how this occurs. Watch how increases in afferent arterial resistance, as seen by the narrowing of the arterial, lead to decreases in glomerular hydrostatic pressure as shown by the green line. As the net hydrostatic pressure decreases, we see a parallel decrease in net ultrafiltration pressure, or GFR, as shown by the blue area. We also see a minor increase in net oncotic pressure as shown by the pink line, which contributes towards the further decrease in net ultrafiltration pressure or GFR. Net oncotic pressure increases slightly because as renal plasma flow declines, the fluid in the glomerular capillaries has more time to be filtered, which concentrates the non-permeable solutes within the glomerular capillaries, thus increasing the net oncotic pressure. Conversely, as efferent arterial resistance increases, as shown by the narrowing of the efferent arterial, we see an increase in glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, followed by an initial increase in net ultrafiltration pressure, or GFR, which occurs because of the increased back pressure created within the glomerular capillaries. Notice that as the hydrostatic pressure continues to increase with increased efferent arterial resistance, the net ultrafiltration pressure, or GFR, paradoxically decreases. This is because the net oncotic pressure increases, which outpaces the increasing glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. This observation is clinically relevant because some drugs preferentially cause increases in afferent arterial resistance, which lead to decreased GFR. This can prove dangerous, especially in patients with compromised renal function. In conclusion, increases in afferent arterial pressure result in decreased glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, which leads to a decrease in renal plasma flow and a decrease in GFR or net ultrafiltration pressure. Conversely, increases in efferent arterial resistance result in increased glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, which leads to a decrease in renal plasma flow and an initial increase in GFR or ultrafiltration pressure. However, with increasing efferent arterial resistance, we see a paradoxical decrease in GFR or net ultrafiltration pressure, which is due to the increase in net oncotic pressure which is directly related to increases in the filtration fraction.